Peru um, about another another fascination with some of the interesting art. Um, this is uh, these are all uh, anonymous paintings um, in the Escuela Cusqueña um, style, and this one uh, just fascinated me. And I'll, the poem describes the painting itself. Lugar divino siglo die, let's see what siglo diecis. This is yet an anonymous painting in the Cusco convent. This, you must remember, is one Andean artist's rendering of the story as he heard it. With the paraclete perched on the cross, like a harpy eagle on the branch of prickly ash, the crucified Christ is stomping grapes in a huge oak vat, while his apostles, carting fruit from nearby vineyards, keep the barrel filled with grapes. From his wounds, a steady stream of blood pours into the wine his dying makes. Two angels crouched beside the spout to crouch beside the spout to catch the nectar in a chalice. Kneeling near the barrel is the downcast Dolorosa, a dagger thrust into her broken heart. And up to the right, a bearded father god turns a massive wooden screw that presses the heavy cross on which subservient sun appears eternally impaled down upon the shoulders of the maker of the wine. In great trapezoidal niches of the empire's temples, usurped holy objects of conquered people were honored. Incas were accustomed to taking up new gods. But what did they think of these bizarre foreign tale, tales? An obedient, hearty peasant of a god stomping grapes with the wine from his wounds forever spurting like an artesian well. And up above the toil of it all, a bearded overlord screwing down upon the cross as if to press the last drop of juice from the apple of his eye. with um, one of the poems from my wonderful book that uh, Wayne Allen Jones and Fractal Edge Press um, oh. published. Woo! Yeah. Woo! Yes, they, uh, well actually I should maybe read. I will read, close with the end one and I will read one, one more from this one. This, one? Um, this is called In Passing, and it, this was a poem written for, um, for my daughter who was born the year after my mother died, and it is um, imagining them in the, in the spirit world, passing each other, one coming and one going. And it's addressed to the child. In Passing, have you not on your separate sojourns passed each other, you and my mother? She getting used to the vastness? you to the confines of matter. She, soul spent gaining vision in retrospect, burning for all that remained. You keeping your unborn vigil at the gate of pain. Did you know each other by your ties to me, she who'd once housed my body within hers? You who sought time and permission to enter through mine? Were there messages, tasks she passed to you? She leaving, you coming to earth. Things she'd forgotten to teach me to ease the tight toil of your birth. What is your mission among us? Fine first daughter in a house of men. Next link in the great unbroken chain of mothers since our mother earth began. And then this one called After the Last Page. It uh, references that feeling when you've really loved a novel, and it's uh, and you come to the end and you kind of hate to mm -hmm. hate to put it down and think, well, geez, what happens tomorrow? Yeah. Life really begins on the morning of the next white page after the novel has ended, after the motives of past generations have twisted themselves like tubers into the actions of the protagonist, when violence has subsided in a denouement past the hurting and the working through, beyond that flash of knowing in the last chapter, the notice of something enduring or strangely beautiful in the natural world. 
when attention has been called to the behavior of barnyard fowl beneath a V of wild geese, or the stance of a wet stallion on a ridge under an expanse of clearing sky, when everything that mattered is over, and everything ahead is too mundane to tell about, but the burdened heart is still not finished circulating crimson words, this is where the story starts. <laughs>